This is a quick guide on how to update your Bowden tube and fittings on an Ender 3. A lot of Ender 3 users have reported improved performance and more consistent extrusion after upgrading their PTFE tube and their Bowden fittings. This is a quick guide on what to look for and how to install them. We're going to start with disassembling the old one so we can see exactly what we're dealing with. Your very first step, which I haven't shown here, is moving your plastic from the Bowden tube. And then what you should be able to do is press down on this fitting here and pull it straight out the top. Mine was mega tight, so tight that even with pliers pushing down, I think the carriage wanted to flex and step before it was going to come out. So if you've got this problem, your only choice is to get a spanner or a set of pliers and to remove it that way. You'll notice it's quite long, it goes all the way down inside the nozzle. The top fitting was also not extracting, so I just unscrewed it by hand to make it as easy as possible. So we've got the thing apart, let's inspect the factory parts and compare them to the replacements that we're going to fit. Here is the factory fitting from the extruder and if we look inside we can see no metal parts. Basically this is just a pressure fit. The top is very spongy when you try and open and close it. Now the one from the hot end is also spongy but you can see it's a lot bigger. It's actually an M10 thread and once again no metal teeth on the inside. I think most people accept now that Capricorn tubing is the best you can get. Links in the description below. For the Ender 3 or a CR10 or anything like that you'll need an M6 fitting for one end and an M10 fitting for the other end. If you want a splurge, you can also spend eight bucks on this tube cutter. Otherwise, use a sharp X-Acto knife, not pliers, they'll crush the tube. Let's compare my old and new fittings. We've got a nice spring on the inside, so it pushes back nice and firm. The size is the same on the outside. If we look inside, we can see metal teeth. They're gonna hold the PTFE tube much more securely. We compare the one for the hot end, and once again, there's some metal teeth on one and only plastic on the other. So it seems after inspecting the new and old parts that there should be a good improvement. We can see when we were printing previously that there was only a pressure fit for the coupler up near the extruder and it could slide back and forth at will. Anytime you introduce play into the assembly, it's only going to make accuracy worsen. Assembly is basically disassembly in reverse. Let's get that done. This is about as easy as it gets. You're going to screw in the fitting into the extruder end and then you're gonna push in the tube until it stops. Should be nice and firm and shouldn't be able to tug it out anymore. Down on the hot end, we're gonna screw in the new one as well. You can use a tool if you want to tighten it, but nothing excessive. And once again, you're gonna push the PTFE tube as far down as you can. Now I thought I'd done a good job here, but I found that I had a bit of a zone where the filament was jamming and causing under extrusion. I undid everything, tried again, and then it was perfect. If you want, you can print one of these little fittings, which I covered in a previous video, and it will lock everything in so there's no possible chance of it coming loose. That's just my finger sliding up and down the tube. So everything's back on and it was time to do a test print. I reprinted the mount for my Easy ABL so I accidentally snapped the old one and unfortunately this print still had some errors. For a while now I've been noticing my circles were out of round so I inspected the printer and found the x-axis belt to be quite loose, tightening it up and then I got this one. This one is much much better. I did up the width of the solid infill and that has tidied up those top surface layers that were previously a little bit under extruded. So that wraps it up for this quick video. I'd love to know in the comments, did you have a problem with the fittings that came on your printer and have you changed them? Did you notice a difference between before and after? Well, my time with modifying the Ender 3 is almost up, but I've still got one more significant video. I'm gonna compare the factory bed versus a sheet of glass versus an aftermarket magnetic sheet. That one's coming up soon, so if you don't wanna miss it, hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.